Welcome back to VTU eSectional Learning Platform. In this video, we are going to discuss regarding the CSMA CD protocol. CSMA means carrier sense multiple access, CD means collision detection. We are adding an additional property to the CSMA protocol to detect a collision. Now, when we talk regarding the aloha and a slotted aloha, these particular protocols does not have a property of detecting the collision. These protocol transmit the frame and they will wait for 2 TP times, 2 times the propagation delay. TP here indicates a propagation delay or a propagation time. So, it, they wait for 2 TP time to get back an acknowledgement. In case if they won't get back an acknowledgement within this time, then they conclude that the collision has occurred. There is no mechanism to detect a collision in aloha and a pure aloha. Now we are adding an additional property to these type of algorithm of detecting the collision. So we will see to it in detail to know regarding this CSMA CD. First we will go through a scenario in which we have a four stations A, B, C, D which are connected to the common link or broadcast link. And they are working on CSMA CD procedure. Okay. Now, how exactly it works and what is the requirement to detect a collision, all those issues we are going to discuss from this figure. Now, initially, this, this medium is free. There is, there is no, uh, no station involved in transmission. Now, at time T1, A senses the medium and starts transmitting the data. So, we will assume that at time t1, the first bit of the a, uh, first bit of the frame that is transmitted by a will start move, move in the medium. So, it travels in both the directions in the medium. We will assume that this is the first station that is connected to the link and d is the last farthest station from a. a. Now, it starts uh, uh, transmitting the first bit of the frame. So, this after uh, say A starts transmitting, still before this first bit reaches C, okay, C is also ready with the data, we will assume that C is also ready with the data, it senses the medium. Now see the situation, still the first bit of A has not reached the C. Since there is a certain distance involved between A and C, the first bit needs certain time to reach C, okay, that time is naturally a certain propagation, uh, it is a propagation delay based on this distance, okay. Uh, how much, how far that C is based on that, that time that propagation delay will be calculated. Now, C started sensing the medium before the first bit of A reaches it. Now, the situation again, when you, if A start, uh, C started sensing the medium before it reaches over here, means still the medium is free for C, what C will do? C will start transmitting its data. Now, the first bit of C has been released over here, okay, before that T1, uh, the first bit of station A comes to C. Now, this, this also starts sending its data, they get collided at this particular point. Now, collision has occurred, once a collision has occurred, depending on the situation of the collision, certain signals will go into move in different directions. This collision signals will move in both the directions. Okay. Now, this call, this signal, the collision signal to reach a C, it uh, will assume that it reached the C at time T3, at time T3. So, till T3 minus T2 time, the station C is involved in transmission. Station t is involved in transmission. We have assumed that station C started transmitting at time T2. Okay. So, T2 is smaller than T3. At T3, the, colli uh, the collision has, uh, uh, before T3, the collision has occurred and at, at time T3, that collided signal will come back to a C. It is noticed that collision has occurred. Okay. Now, so, for, for T3 minus T2 period, C is involved in transmission. But when it comes to a station A, so, A is involved in transmission for T1 minus T4 time, I mean T4 minus T1 period. 
okay so this much of time it is involved in transmission so that means a has started large part of the frame now see we assumed here a is still involved in transmission transmitting the data okay we are only talking regarding the first bit that get collided at this point but a is still involved in transmission we assumed that it is transmitting still it is involved in transmitting different bits of other part uh, other part of the frame okay so that means to notice the collision what is expected is the station should be involved in transmission say unless and until they are there for transmission it is not possible for them to detect the collision in case if they finish the transmission before this time period then it will not notice that collision this is what is the case with the pure aloha and the slotted aloha there the stations were allowed to transmit and they were made to wait for 2 tp time there we are not putting a, a say condition on minimum size of the frame that station should transmit whereas here we are expecting the station should involve in transmission for certain amount of time that time will going to be decided by this propagation delay it is the propagation delay which will going to decide the size of the frame okay so if the propagation delay between two farthest station is tp then the frame transmission time or we call it as tfr we call it as tfr tfr must be equal to 2 tp times if the frame size okay or if a station any any station in this system if it involves in transmission for a 2 tp times then only it is possible for it to detect the collision this is what is the condition that is required to be fulfilled to achieve csma cd procedure okay uh, to add that ability of collision detection we need to make a station to transmit the frame for 2 tp times okay so that means we are putting a restriction here on minimum size of the frame okay station should involve in transmission of certain size of frame then only it has an ability to detect the collision otherwise it is not possible for it to detect the collision okay so based on these facts we will try to attempt one example okay so consider a situation where uh, consider the network in which uh, which is working on csma cd procedure and the link bandwidth the link one which is used in the network say for example we have a system like this okay in which uh, multiple stations are connected like this to the broadcast link okay to the broadcast link and bandwidth of this link is 10 mbps yes the bandwidth of this link is 10 mbps and we are also talking regarding the maximum propagation delay that is 25.6 microseconds okay so this is maximum propagation delay tp is given now we'll see how exactly what should be the minimum size of the frame yes so your propagation delay is 25 25.6 uh, microseconds and the bandwidth of the link shared link is 10 mbps okay these are the data that is given and they are asked us to find what is the minimum size of the frame we'll see to it how exactly it will be as i told you uh, in the previous case so the minimum size of the frame okay it is depends on two times the tp okay two times tp tp is what tp is 2 into 25 point i mean uh, 25.6 microseconds okay it is 51.2 microseconds so frame transmission time must be equal to 25 point a uh, 51.2 microseconds okay so it is 51.2 microseconds so what we expect is every station must involve in transmission for minimum of 51.2 microseconds this is what is the minimum condition it requires to satisfy so to transmit this much of period okay for this much of period with this bandwidth 
okay the frame size or the file size will be obtained in this way tfr is equal to tfr is a frame transmission time so as you know that transmission time is given by file size or frame size either uh, either of the term you use so file size divided by bandwidth so file size we are calculating here i write it as fs and bandwidth we know it is 10 mbps yes and tfr also we have calculated just now it is 51.2 microseconds okay if you cross multiply it you will going to get the answer i will show it to you the complete solved part of it okay so you see uh, tp is 51 point i mean tfr is 51.2 microseconds so this is obtained by multiplying propagation delay or a propagation time with 2 and station we expect it to be involved in transmission for 51.2 microseconds okay and as i said that transmission time is equal to frame size divided by bandwidth so using that formula they are calculating the minimum size of the frame which is equal to 10 mbps into 512.2 microseconds which is equal to 512 12 bits if you convert that into a bytes means if i divide this 512 by 8 okay so you're going to get 64 so the 64 is nothing but bytes so the minimum size of the frame in a csma cd must be 64 byte if it is if the link bandwidth is 10 mbps if the link bandwidth is 10 mbps and if the total propagation delay between two farthest uh, farthest station is 25.6 if it is the case okay so the minimum size of the frame is 64 bytes I hope it is clear to you. So we'll discuss the detailed procedure of CSMA CA. As I said, it is nothing different from the previous algorithm. Okay, more or less similar kind of a things are used in a CSMA CD also, but the slight change is the minimum size of the frame. To begin with, we are initializing the K as usual, which is K is indicating the number of attempts. So this is indicating number of attempts k is number of attempts yes so initially the number of attempt is zero to begin with and we are applying one of the persistent technique so those we discussed a three different persistent technique that is p persistent yes non persistent or one persistent so either of these uh, uh, any one of these technique is used over here we are not specific about it okay so either p persistent or one persistent or non persistent technique is used over here so after applying that persistent technique based on the persistent technique which persistent technique is used if a medium is free if a medium is free the station is allowed to transmit okay so when it is involved in transmission it is also capable to receive that you keep it in mind that is the reason we say that transmit and receive okay so it complete it starts transmitting and receiving okay so that means it is also doing a task of listening to the medium whether is there any collision occurred or not okay so in case if it notices the collision okay if there is a collision okay so when it was involved when it is involved in a transmission if the collision has occurred okay so say if it has transmitted a half frame size if it notices the collision it will back off from transmission so that is the reason i have added a two say decision box over here in this flow chart so this is indicating that say after transmitting a few bits like say in in that case after transmitting a say few half of the file and if it notices a collision to specify or to indicate that 
situation we have added this decision box but this decision box is talking regarding after complete transmission of the file is there any collision detected okay so these two decision box are connected with collision detection only okay at different time intervals now after transmitting in case if it detects the collision okay so that means it has to go for the next attempt if collision is not detected okay the transmission is successful at a, uh, it concludes and it will wait for next file transmission again it will follow the same procedure now in case the collision is not detected the outcome is what transmission is successful now notice one thing over here we are not talking about acknowledgement in this procedure in a pure aloha case or in a slotted aloha case we were talking of adding this uh, we are uh, insisting the station to wait for 2 tp times okay whereas we have eliminated that waiting period over here we are not insisting the station to wait till 2 tp times okay after completion of its transmission you are making a station to wait for a 2 tp times in a aloha or a pure aloha case but whereas here we are not insisting it to wait for 2 tp times so moment the transmission gets completed it gives an indication it concludes that transmission is successful okay say before transmission gets completed if it notices the collision when it is involved in transmission during that time if it notices the collision the situation is what it is indicating the uh, it will back off from the transmission you are saving the time of stations here moment they notice the collision rather than say involved in involved in transmitting the file it back off from the transmission okay now here in this discussion we have added a one additional thing that is jamming signal okay now what exactly this jamming signal will do the station one which it notices the collision first it will intimate it to the other stations regarding the collision okay regarding the collision the station one which notices this particular event okay one which comes to know regarding this collision first it will tell it to the others which are say nearer to each, each other so to intimate it regarding the collision it uses the jamming signal okay if collision is detected the station one which notices it first it sends the jamming signal to everyone okay so this is how the information regarding collision will going to be spread in the system some of the stations are capable to notice the collision based on the received signal but in this case when we talk of a situation where only two stations are involved in transmission and receiving other stations will not come to know regarding the collision to intimate it to the other stations we are using the concept of jamming signal now since it is a failed attempt we are increasing this k by one okay if the collision has occurred the number of attempts will increase so that is the reason we are increasing this k k value okay now again we are comparing this k k with k max okay k is we are comparing k with k max whether k is greater than k max or what k is greater than or equal to k max or what in case in case if k is not greater than k max okay then the conclusion is what still the station has left with say more chance for transmission okay then it will back off uh, say if the k is less than k ma max it will back off like the procedure that what we discussed in aloha in the same manner it selects some random number based on that random number it will decide to back off okay it will decide how much time to back off okay so tp will going to be decided by this t then after that tb time again it makes a new attempt to transmit so like this csma cd works this is regarding csma cd next is csma ca okay 
सो कैरियर सेंस मल्टीपल एक्सेस विथ कोलिजन अवॉइडेंस प्रॉपर्टी इन द प्रीवियस केस वी हैव वी टॉक रिगार्डिंग कोलिजन डिटेक्शन प्रॉपर्टी इन दिस प्रोसीजर वी आर टॉकिंग रिगार्डिंग कोलिजन अवॉइडेंस प्रॉपर्टी दिस पर्टिकुलर अलगोरदम इज मोर सुटेबल फॉर वायरलेस डिवाइसिस ओके वेन इट कम्स टू वायरलेस लैन और एनी वायरलेस डिवाइसिस the situation in a wireless environment is slightly different from that of say situation in the guided media environment okay so whenever we use some link say some physical link like cables yes as a medium the signal strength will not vary too much in this environment but when it comes to the wireless environment where the signal that is say emitted by the station or the signal that is transmitted by the station will undergo uh, say different distortions such as multipath say fading doppler effect and again signal strength also will reduce mainly because of many such effects okay so the received power strength will going to be very very less compared to that of the transmitted power now this type of a situation which leads to force us to change the technique that is used in csma cd okay whereas in csma ca we are not bothered of detecting the collision because it is difficult or it is a slightly impossible kind of a situation where to detect the collision in a wireless environment again when it comes to a wireless systems we have some other situations of the type say hidden station problem and exposed station problems what exactly this hidden station problem and exposed station problem means i will discuss regarding the thing uh, i'll talk regarding say this situation consider a station a station b and a station c we have a three stations like this i'll assume that station b only covers c uh, a but not c okay so that means station a is in the transmission range of b but c is not in a transmission range of b when it comes to c i'll assume the same similar kind of a situation where c is only covering a c's transmission is only capable to cover a not b if this type of a situation is there okay now if c wants to send some data to a, a now look at the situation c wants to send some data to a and b also wants to send some data to a a both of them they will sense the medium before transmission okay so assume that b started transmission first okay this will give you a correct picture regarding say regarding that say exposed uh, station problem uh, hidden station problem okay now we will assume that b started transmitting earlier uh, initially and before transmission it will use the technique of sensing the medium it senses the medium we will assume that medium is free from the point of view of b and it start transmitting it to the a now it is involved in transmission of a data to a a since b is not capable to cover c c will not come to know regarding this b's transmission because the signal strength that is uh, the signal that is transmitted by b by the time it reaches c its strength will be so low that c cannot detect the signal that is transmitted by b because that is not anyway that is not in the range of c we'll assume that that signal is not only reaching c even though if it reaches it is not in a situ uh, in a position of detectable by c its strength will going to be so low yes so now what happened when c wants to transmit data it senses the medium C still a medium is free for a C. It's it also start transmitting a data to a A. Now see both the stations are 
engaged in transmitting the data to a station A. Now this leads to a situation of collision of data at nearer to a A. The B has sent the data, C also has sent the data, both of their data gets collided nearer to the A. This situation we call it as exposed station problem, exposed station problem. Okay. So these type of a problems which will make the CSMA CD not suitable for wireless environment. In CSMA CD the procedure used is what? In case if that is a collision occurs, the energy levels of the signal gets changed. Based on those changed energy levels, the stations will come to know regarding the collision. Now when it comes to a CSMA CA, in case if two frames gets collided, their energy level changes here also, but by the time it reaches those stations, okay, its strength of that signal will be so low, it is not possible for those stations to detect whether there is a collision occurred or not. Okay, because the signal has to take round trip time, it has to travel in two directions. Say earlier it has propagated in one direction, if collision occurs again it has to move back from that place to original station. So overall distance involved is large. Okay, If that distance increases, definitely received power will also going to be reduced. So normally we talk, say here I will give you some rough formula of received power in a wireless case with uh, in relation with transmitted power. PR indicates received power, PTK indicates the transmitted power is proportional to square of a distance. Square of a distance. It is a rough uh, formula. So, if this distance increases, so that will also going to increase it by square which leads to a decrease in power. Okay. So, this is this d square is for very much idealistic situation, idealistic condition. So based on that, I have written this formula. So this will reduce the strength of the power very drastically. So in the end, received power will going to be so small, it is not possible to detect by stations. Now to avoid these type of situation, we are talking of modifying that CSMA CD and we are calling it as a CSMA CA. Here we are trying to avoid the collision at a first place. Okay, so it does not mean that the collisions will not occur in this type of procedures. Here too the collisions will occur. Even though we have taken care to avoid the collisions, definitely the collisions will occur in this type of a environment. Okay, now how exactly to deal with those collisions and what is the procedure, what is the strategy that is we are using say in CSMSCA that we will see and that is again explained with the help of flowchart, one which is shown over here. Now to begin with, as usual, say we are initializing this number of attempts k equal to 0. So say I have not added the start point, so here we need to add say that start point, this is a start point, from here it starts initialized k equal to 0, again uh, station senses the medium, the sensing technique and transmission technique almost same as that of CSMA CA, I mean CSMA CD, okay. So it uses one of the persistent technique, okay, and uh, it senses the medium. But when it comes to a transmission of data before transmitting a frame, Okay, it will going to wait for certain amount of time. It will going to wait for certain amount of time. That waiting time we call it as IFS. Okay, inter frame space time. Inter frame space time. So this IFS has different values for different types of frames. In CSMA CA we use certain different types of frames. Okay. In CSMA CA, we use different types of frame such as RTS frame, 
I will tell you what is RTS, CTS frame and data frame. Okay, apart from that we also use acknowledgement frame. Okay, like this we use four different types of frames in a CSMA, CA procedure or a protocol. So because of that the definition of IFS changes based on these frames. Okay, based on these frames. Sometimes we call this IFS as SIFS or DIFS. Okay, we call it as SIFS or DIFS. Now, when a station senses the medium is free, okay, it will wait for IFS time. After waiting for period of IFS time, it chooses a random number R, okay, so between 0 and 2 raised to K and uses the Rth slot, okay, so that we, that slot we call it as a contention window. What exactly does the con contention window means? Contention window is an amount of time divided into a slots. The station that is ready to send chooses this random number of slots okay, and wait for that much period. Wait for that much period. To know regarding that, we will we'll use this figure. You see, as it was shown over here, station senses the medium continuously which is of the type 1 persistent. Okay, moment it finds that say station is free, medium is free okay immediately it will not jump for transmission it waits for ifs time okay it waits for ifs time now i was talking regarding r so the r will decide which slot the station will going to use this is a random selection so there are random number r will decide in which slot uh, we, uh, up to what slot the station has to wait for a transmission. Say for example, the, the selected station, one which has undergone all this procedure has selected R equal to this value. Okay, So, I will call it as 2. This is 0 slot 1, 2. So, if R has selected 2, so the R value is 2, then station has to wait this much period. It has to wait for a this much of time before transmission. So, first anyway it has to wait no matter whatever may be the value of R it has to wait for IFS time. After that it has to wait certain additional amount of time. So, that is going to be decided by R. Okay. So, then after say waiting for that much period. Now, you see after waiting for this much period fine station will going to send RTS frame. Okay. Station will going to send RTS frame. As I said, RTS means request to send frame. Okay. Request to send frame. Actually, it is not a, a data frame. Okay. So, these are a, a smaller frames. Okay. These are the smaller frames which will assess the medium whether the medium is free or not. In case if collision occurs, the collision of only RTS and CTS frame occurs in the medium. Okay. So, since these frames are very smaller in size, it will not going to say uh, waste a lot of time. Okay. And say it will help us to utilize the time in an efficient manner. Okay. That is the reason we use RTS and the CTS frames before actual data transmission in a CSMA CA. So, first station sends a RTS frame. Okay. So, after sending an RTS frame, it sets a timer. Okay. It sets a timer. So, now uh, what happens? It is waiting for CTS frame. Now, see here since there is no mechanism to detect the collision, again we have to rely on acknowledgement only. So, station has sent a RTS frame, the acknowledgement for RTS is CTS. Okay. So, 
the CTS is nothing but an acknowledgement for RTS. Okay, clear to uh, clear uh, clear to send. Okay, CTS means clear to send. RTS means ready to send. Okay, so station waits for say normally it will be two TP time or certain timeout period is decided. Okay, so by considering say worst case TP, we are talking of calculating the time timeout. Okay, so again the procedure adopted for a timeout remains same as that of Aloha. The station is made to wait for two TP time or a timeout period. Within that timeout period, if it gets a CTS conclusion, is what? Everything is fine. Okay, so station is allowed to send. Okay, station is allowed to send. Um, then after getting the CTS frame, station is not immediately allowed to transmit. Again, it is made to wait for IFS time. Okay, I told you there are some different values of IFS and CI, SI, SIFS. Uh, th there are different versions of IFS that is SIFS and DIFS. Okay, DIFS means say uh, DCF IFS. Okay, DCF interf interframe space time. Okay, then whereas SIFS means short interframe space time. Okay, so SIFS is smaller than DIFS. Now, I, I, as it was told to you, depending on the frame with which the station is dealing, okay, depending on that, this one of these values will be selected. So, when I say wait for IFS over here. That is DIFS, which is say very large time compared to other IFS. Okay. And when it comes to wait for IFS over here, it is SIFS, very short time. Okay. SIFS, short duration of time. Okay. So once a CTS is received, okay, station is allowed to transmit the data. You will come to know. Regarding this in detail, once if I show you, say, the way in which the stations transmit and receive the data, okay, with the help of the timing diagram, okay, then if it gets a CTS back within the timeout period, it again waits for IFS time and it sends its frame, it sends it frame say and again sets the timer again this timer setting is mainly because of waiting for acknowledgement it sends a frame waits for an acknowledgement in case if it does not get an acknowledgement within the timeout period that means the transmission is not successful transmission is not successful if it gets an acknowledgement within the waiting period transmission is successful that means it will about the trans uh, it will wait for, uh, go for the next transmission in case if it won't get back an acknowledgement for within the waiting period okay so conclusion is what there is a collision okay so that makes that number of attempts to increase by one if number of attempts increases by one okay again we will going to check this value of k with k max if k max uh, k is greater than a k max or greater than or equal to k max will abort the transmission if it is less than that value again the we are backing off backing off procedure remains same that of that of uh, that what we have discussed earlier that is wait for tb time okay tb back off time so calculation of tb again remains same as that of aloha so waits for TB time. We call it as a binary back off procedure. Okay. After waiting for a TB period, again it will make a fresh attempt for transmission. So here we are making it to wait for DIFS time, whereas in this case we are making it to wait for SIFS time. Okay, we will see to it in detail. You see what exactly this SIFS and DIFS. This 
this diagram will give you the correct picture regarding these different IFS times. Now assume a system with four stations, station S, station B, station C and station D. Now assume that station S wants to transmit certain data to a station D. Okay. So to begin with station A senses the medium continuously. Okay. Moment it finds the medium is free, it waits for a DIFS time. After waiting for a DIFS time, it selects one time slot R and again waits for that much time and sense the medium if it is free, it starts transmitting the data. So to before transmission of actual data, it sends the RTS frame. This is what we said there. So after sending the RTS frame, okay, it waits for CTS frame. In case, we will assume that the timeout occurs here. In case if it does not get back the CTS frame within the timeout period, okay, conclusion by station S is what? The medium is not free. Okay, so it will back off from transmission. So after getting back a CTS, it, it has a chance for transmission. That means medium is free. Now see, moment it gets back and CTS, it is waiting for again SIFS time period. Okay. It is making every move very cautiously. That is the reason after, after reception of every frame, it is made to wait. Okay. So after waiting for SIFS period, it senses the medium. If it is still free, it starts transmitting the data. Okay. So once a data transmission gets over, if it gets a acknowledgement for the sent data, conclusion is what? Transmission is successful. But in case, okay, after waiting for SIF period, if it notices medium is not free, it will not go for a transmission. It will not go for a transmission. Okay. So even though after taking so much of care, whether the collisions will going to occur or not, that will be the question. Definitely there is a possibility of collision. That is the reason we are taking all these precautions. Like say after every transmission, we are making a station to wait for certain amount of time. Okay. Now one more thing about CSMA CA. That whenever we send, whenever a station sends a CTS frame. Okay. It also involves the information which we call it as NAV information, network address, okay, uh, net, uh, sorry, network allocation vector, okay, NAV means network allocation vector, it involves this information also in it. So how much period the S and D will going to use this channel, that information is passed to every station with the help of NAV. Okay, network allocation vector. How much time this network is allocated for a transmission or for uh, for communication purpose between S and D. Okay, now based on this information, other stations will make their effort of sensing the medium. Whenever there is a NAV which has specified, which is already specified by station S, if it is that information is there with other stations, they will not make an attempt to sense the medium during this period. No station makes an attempt to send sense the medium during this period. Okay. So this gives additional information to the stations which are not involved in transmission. That A will go to A and uh, S will go, uh, sorry, S and D is going to involve in transmission for this much period. Everyone knows about it. So that means they will not go for a transmission of fresh data. This gives, this again helps us to avoid the collision. So this is all about CSMA CA. In the next video, we will going to discuss regarding controlled access techniques. Thank you very much.